they grabbed 8,000 cell phones and they put them on a six foot pole and they put them all around the Ukraine and they put a microphone like this next to it so they could hear the one way UAVs coming overhead. Cost $500. Russia is really pushing the Ukraine card regarding the terror attack in Moscow. Despite the statement by ISIS taking responsibility for the attack and the lack of motive for Ukraine to pursue that kind of action, the Russian regime is trying with all its propaganda efforts to find a connection between Ukraine and the attackers. So we will try to make their job harder and expose the suspicious connection between the Russian Secret Service and the attack. We are using the available videos from the attack. Let's look at this guy who was sitting at the concert hall during the attack and the guy who made the arrest several hundred miles from Moscow. Are they the same person? Men in blue. We have identified agents of the Russian secret services in the Crocus Hall. Our editorial staff continues to analyze photos and videos of the terrorist Crocus City Hall attack and everything related to it. This is the same guy, right? There are oddities captured on one of the videos a couple of minutes before the shooting started in the concert hall. It showed several similarly dressed men in blue sweaters and jeans first looking at each other suspiciously and then began urging the crowd to close the doors, resulting in a huge loss of human life. Our editorial staff assumed that these might be FSB officers due to their far from clean reputation concerning terrorist attacks in Russia. By continuing to study open source information, we tried to identify the men in blue who aroused our suspicions. Due to the poor quality of the video, it is difficult to compare the faces of these men with the open database. But we still managed to find one alleged FSB officer. In the video from the concert hall, at some moment, one of the men in blue can be seen going down from the top row instead of leaving the hall like everyone else. Then he supports the calls for the doors to be closed. His face is clearly visible. So we managed to find a photo of a very similar person in open sources. And look at this guy wearing the same outfit, calmly filming the scene while everybody panics around him. He is communicating with the guy in front who also wears the same outfit. And let's see the Russian narrative now. Head of Russian FSB Bortnikov on the investigation of the terrorist attack in Crocus City Hall. Ukrainian special services facilitated the terrorist attack in Crocus City Hall. Radical Islamists were preparing it.
and Russians at their best. In Moscow Metro, far-right activists shouted at a resident of Yakutia that Russia is for Russians. In addition to aggressive statements, young people also did the Nazi salute and shouted, Glory to Tesak! Maxim Martsinkovich, a.k.a. Tesak, was a Russian neo-Nazi ideologue who died in prison in 2020. None of the passers-by ever interceded for the girl. Barbaric customs in a barbaric country. <laughs> Let's move to the front lines. Ukrainians have put 8,000 cell phones with microphones to poles across the country to help track the direction of the Shahed drones. General James B. Hecker, commander of United States Air Forces in Europe. Necessity is truly the mother of invention. Glory. They grabbed 8,000 cell phones and they put them on a six-foot pole and they put them all around the Ukraine and they put a microphone like this next to it so they could hear the one-way UAVs coming overhead. Cost $500. They were able to get headings, they were able to get velocity of these things. Not only were they cheap to produce, but General Hecker says they could then share that information with some 200 mobile units using AAA. That's anti-aircraft artillery. And they train a guy for six hours to sit in the AAA and look at an iPad that would show them where the UAVs were coming in. They had 84 of them that came in the other day. They tracked all 84. They shot down 80 with AAA. That's on the right side of the cost curve, as opposed to shooting them down with Patriots and SM-2 missiles. 48 hours to evacuate and turn into dust. Russian propagandists propose to wipe Kharkiv out. Not so long ago, their fellow liar Martin claimed that Russia would not hit Kharkiv en masse because it considers it a Russian city. And yet Ukraine is the terrorist to them. Так сказать, довольно широкая практика, которую используют и американцы, и э, израильтяне. Да, мы не хотим уничтожать, убивать там мирное население, мирных жителей. Но объяви ты, что вот этот район там, этот населенный пункт, 48 часов, ну вот как израильтяне в Рафахе, например, 48 часов мирному населению покинуть этот город. И после этого превратить его в пыль. По-моему, некто ведущий Соловьев это предлагал делать не так давно, да? Владимир Рудольфович. Да, аж год назад, говорю, ну, когда они первый раз по Белгороду ударили, я уже тогда говорил, объявить Харьков 24 часа на эвакуацию и стереть с лица земли. Ну, стереть э, Харьков с лица земли, наверное, все-таки, так сказать, это понадобится очень, 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 очень много, так сказать, чего, но более... Э, а что, мелкими... У нас есть ряд, э, то, есть, что мы вывели с боевого есть. дежурства, заменить э, ядерную часть на э, иную и Владимир... до свидания. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe. Also, if you want to support Warthog Defense, please become our member and get early access to new videos, exclusive members only videos, and become administrator in comment section. The membership link is in the description. Rescues. Every day we had a guy last week at six rescues in six days. You know, he's doing the job every day.